Hey, it's uh, Paul from HowToNetwork.com. I uh, so since two thousand and two, when I started t well, consulting and and doing some teaching in IT, I've helped probably tens of thousands of students. Now um, I do get a lot of feedback, and not everyone is successful in their exam first time. And I'm going to share with you consistently what I've learned over the past fifteen. Um, 15 plus 20 years now of helping people and getting feedback and also having students come to me who failed some exams four or five times and need some help on what they're doing wrong and it's almost always strategy not actually learning the material so um, we'll just go through these ideas so it doesn't happen to you if you've never heard of me I've written quite a few books on IT uh, I've got 101 lab set and then the simplified range and CCNA in 60 days. Used to work for Cisco TAC. I've been teaching for quite a long time. So uh, I started knowing nothing. I've also, by the way, failed exams along the way. I failed, I think, a Microsoft exam and I failed the CCNA first time I ever tried it. You may have heard from me from howtonetwork.com, 101labs.net, and in 60days.com. So um, please subscribe if you um, haven't already, you can smack the bell and get more videos like this. So this is the state of IT exams at the moment or, or ever, ever since I've been teaching. Out of every 100 that start studying, 90 quit along the way. So they don't even get to take the exam. Um, you, I'm sure you know all the excuses, too busy, pressures of work, travel, etc, etc. All excuses, um, you know, because we're all busy. I've got um, uh, children and a busy life also, but you've just got a schedule, even if it's only 30 minutes a day. So we're not worried about the people that quit. We'll think about the 10 that actually take the exam and five uh, of those fail. So for almost every IT exam, the pass rate is hovering at around 50%. Some of the people who fail, fail more than once. I've been on forums and people have failed the CompTIA Network Plus exam four times. As I said, the Cisco CCNA. Failed the CCNA a few times. Uh, it's pretty uh, heartbreaking. So a typical cost, the CCNA, depending on where you are in the world, it's $325 per attempt. You don't get to retake it for free. Network Plus, $319. Uh, a lot of money. Bear in mind, you're... All you're doing is turning up and taking a computer-based exam and nobody really, there's hardly any um, manpower involved. Uh, Wireshark 300 and then some Google AWS Azure exams, anything from $100 to $300 depending on the level of exam you're taking. So this is a lot of money. Bear in mind you're taking some of these more than once. So for example, the Network Plus, if it takes you three goes to pass, you've wasted $680. So it's pretty heartbreaking. Obviously, the travel costs, train, car parking, etc. So this is the number one reason and pretty much in order, I think, of, of reasons why. Didn't do practice exams. This is it's crazy when I, when, when I think about it. You're you're getting tested on what you know in an exam and people just use a textbook to prepare. Well, you must do a ton of practice exams. You must do them every day. You must do them from day one. Now, I know what you're thinking. On day one, you probably couldn't answer 99% of the questions. It doesn't matter. The exams, the practice exams are just a study tool. And um, I know what I'm talking about. I don't know much. But I know how to get people through IT exams. So don't don't leave it till the end. That's too late. Do it from day one, even though you, you can't answer most of the questions. So use it as a study tool. So every day you should be doing your books and or videos if you're doing video training, hands-on labs and practice exams every day. Uh, keep doing the practice exams until you're getting at least 95%, preferably more, because most exams, the pass mark is around 85%. Some are easier, but uh, it's around 85 This prepares you for the actual exam, so it's preparing you for putting your knowledge into practice. And it's a whole answering questions about a TCP three-way handshake 
is different to just reading a book about it, trust me. Next one, didn't check the syllabus. Now, I've written books and I check the syllabus and then I write the book, but um, it's your job. You're taking the exam, so it's your job to check the vendor syllabus. Don't just rely on your study guide. So don't rely on the author having gone through it and putting everything in. Sometimes they don't. The other thing is you read the terms and conditions on the vendor's website. They can add, change or remove topics at a whim. They can even post questions that aren't scored. They're just test questions to see how people uh, perform in the exam with those questions. They can also, Cisco are famous for this, adding questions that aren't um, in the syllabus. So just be careful. So I've said that, um, always tick off the vendor syllabus. So print it off or download it to your machine and um, mark off the bits that you've actually studied. I like to give it a score out of 10. So I'll start off, I'll know it like maybe 2 out of 10, then I'll scrub it off and later I'll know it 5 out of 10 and so on. And the number should eventually get to 9 or 10. Ran out of time. This is a classic uh, and this is why we're doing practice exams. So most exams run at 90 minutes. Some beginner exams are 60 minutes. There's a small clock that runs on the bottom of the computer screen. So you need to keep a tab of that. So, for example, if you've got 60 questions and 60 minutes in the exam, you know you should be averaging one minute per question. Prepare with practice exams, drill and drill exams, and then hands-on labs. Bear in mind, for example, Cisco, all of their exams have a practical uh, section, apart from design, but all the network engineer stuff has a practical. So that isn't a question that you can just tick. You've got to log into equipment to configure it and troubleshoot it. So you need to allow time for that. If you get stuck on a question, you can normally look at the answers. If there's five, you can normally say at least two of the answers are definitely wrong, maybe three. So that leaves you with a 50-50. And this is only if you're running out of time and you've got to get through. Mine goes blank. On the right is an extract from my exam coaching course on howtonetwork.com. That's day 29, banish exam nerves. I've put, this, put that together because I know a lot of people are failing because of number four. So froze under pressure, stress, your body's releasing adrenaline, the blood uh, leaves your um, brain and goes into your muscles. This is called um, fight or flight which is in, uh, written into our DNA. This is why you can't think of anything. There's no um, blood left in your brain or not much. So you can't remember anything. Again, this comes back to uh, number one, your practice exams, do loads of labs, uh, keep drilling, go through the syllabus until you're really confident. And then with confidence comes um, peace of mind. I also recommend, I've got a blog post somewhere, which I can't remember where it is, on your exam taking strategy. One of the things I tell you to do is find the exam center and just go inside. It's normally in a training um, office. So they're teaching IT courses as well. And um, on the side will be a, a exam classroom, which has got a camera in. So find out where it is, what it looks like. And you can go and ask questions from the moderator who normally sits and watches the camera. Understand the exam procedures. You'll need to take two forms of ID. You'll normally need to take your booking sheet. How long is it? Uh, can you take anything in? Normally not. You can't even take pen or paper. Understand all this so you're not shocked when you go in and then you'll start getting nervous. Prepare well with a study plan. I've also uploaded a couple of other. Uh, these are from my exam coaching course. Day 13 is a whole mini course on dealing with stress. Day 19 and programming your subconscious. The other thing is you didn't do your hands on. Every, almost every single exam vendor is testing you on your hands on knowledge. Now, don't get me wrong. I think on exams like CompTIA, you don't configure equipment because it's vendor neutral. However, a firewall, a picture of a firewall will pop up and you'll need to decide what the rules are. Now, unless you've done some sort of configuration, you're going to be stuck. So you can only really learn by doing. So for example, if you're doing a course on Windows 10 
uh, if all you do is watch videos on it and don't do labs for Windows 10, even playing with it in a virtual machine, you're probably going to fail. So it didn't do your hands-on. 50% of your marks if you take a Cisco exam or from practicals, install, configure, troubleshoot, or just do diagnosis of um, Cisco routers and switches. Many students are shocked at how hard the labs are. You, for example, even for entry level Cisco exams, you have to configure, troubleshoot, OSPF, ERGRP, an access list. You know, these are tricky things to do. So you need to have done lots of labs so you're confident. Many struggle to recall commands. Uh, again, this is just lack of practice of hands on. All exams require some hands on understanding. At the bottom right there is just a screenshot from my 101 labs websites. I only put that on there because it's relevant to this point. All right, so configure, install, troubleshoot, or discover. You can even find out how TCP IP works by doing hands-on labs, uh, checking with Wireshark, looking at packets, using Packet Tracer, that kind of thing. All right, so get prepped. Again, this is just my 30-second sales pitch if you want to increase your chances of passing. Hatternetwork.com, forum. Uh, that's, sorry, that's the entire coaching course. That's the CCNA coaching course. So I've got general coaching also. Live Cisco racks, uh, practice exams, tons of uh, videos. Uh, exam coaching, as I said. If you want to have a go over on that website, it's a um, 30 day trial for $1. That's the special URL you need to use to get the deal. Have a look around the website and then um, go to that URL. So all these goodies here. I'm hurrying because there's one of the slides I don't normally have. 101labs.net. If you're happy with the study guide you've got but want to get hands-on practice, then um, check out 101labs.net. Uh, it's all hands-on. There's no theory. So um, I'm just teaching you the practical bits. Every course, for example, Network Plus, um, Subnetting, CCNA, CCMP, Linux, they've all got 200 exam questions also. Live Cisco Racks, if you want to check it out and interested in joining, the code is YouTube. That's all I've got to say. If you follow my five main points, you'll massively increase your chances of passing. So I wish you all the best and I'll see you on the next video.